आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंस मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस कैंपेनिंग इंटेंसिफाइज फॉर रिमेनिंग फेजेस ऑफ लोकसभा इलेक्शंस नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एडवाइजर अजीत डोभाल होल्ड्स एन्युअल इंडिया यूके स्ट्रेटेजिक डायलॉग विद हिज यूके काउंटरपार्ट टिम बैरो इन न्यू दिल्ली Iran releases five Indian sailors on board seized Israeli linked vessel. Char Dham Yatra in Uttarakhand begins with the opening of Kedarnath portals. DRDO successfully develops liquid ramjet fuel for an advanced air breathing engine. And Hockey India announces 24 member men's team for FIH Hockey Pro League 2023-24. And now the news in detail. Campaigning for Lok Sabha elections is in full swing. Leaders of various political parties are holding rallies across states for the fourth phase and remaining phases of the Lok Sabha elections. Voting in the fourth phase will take place on the 13th of this month in 96 seats spread across 10 states and a union territory. As many as 1717 candidates are in the fray for this phase. Prime Minister and senior BJP leader Narendra Modi will be addressing two rallies at Narayan Pet and Hyderabad today. The meeting to be held this evening at LB Stadium in Hyderabad will be the last poll rally of Mr Modi in Telangana. Earlier Congress senior leader Rahul Gandhi alleged that the BJP and its allies are trying to undermine the constitution. He made it clear that the Congress with the support of people of the country will protect the constitution at any cost. addressing two public meetings at Sarur Nagar in Hyderabad and Narsapur in Medak districts last evening Mr Gandhi emphasized on the resilience of the Indian constitution he said it cannot be harmed by any force in the world Mr Gandhi is scheduled to address joint rallies with Samajwadi Party president Akhilesh Yadav in UP's Kannauj and Kanpur while BSP Supremo Mayawati is scheduled to address an election rally in Magrasa of Ramaipur in Akbarpur parliamentary constituency Uttar Pradesh Prime Minister and senior BJP leader Narendra Modi will address an election rally in the tribal domination Nandurbar district of Maharashtra in favor of BJP candidate Hina Gavit Hina Gavit is contesting against the Congress nominee advocate Goval Padvi More details from our correspondent. Campaigning for the fourth phase of elections in Maharashtra is going on in full swing. Shiv Sena UBT chief and former chief minister of Maharashtra Uddhav Thakre is going to campaign in Jalna today in favor of Mahavikas Aghadi candidate Kalyan Kale. Uddhav Thakre was campaigning in Ahmednagar yesterday. NCP SP chief Sharad Pawar campaigned in Bir district yesterday. Union minister Piyush Goel campaigned in the northwest Mumbai constituency. Prarthana Akashvani News Mumbai. In Uttar Pradesh today is the day of high profile nominations and high voltage campaigning a report For the first time during this election campaign Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav and former Congress president Rahul Gandhi will jointly address political rallies in Kannauj Kanpur today Senior BJP leader and chief minister of his state Yogi Adityanath will address political rallies in Gorakhpur and Bahraich districts while BJP leader and chief minister of Uttarakhand Pushkar Singh Dhami will participate in the nomination of BJP candidate Parasnath Rai from Ghazipur constituency he will later address rallies in Sitapur and Shravasti National President of Bharatiya Janata Yuva Morcha Tejasvi Surya will be in state today and campaign in Amethi and Prayagraj districts on the other hand it's a day of high profile nominations also Congress state president and party candidate from the VIP constituency Varanasi Ajay Rai is scheduled to file his nomination today while union minister and BJP candidate from Chandauli Dr Mahendra Nath Pandey will also file his nomination nation Sushil Chandra Tiwari Akashwani News Lucknow In Jharkhand elections will be held in the last four phases on 14 seats of the state In the fourth phase voting will be held on four seats Our Ranchi correspondent reports about campaigning in the state today 
Senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister will address an election rally in Khunti in favor of NDA candidate Arjun Munda. Whereas senior BJP leader Rajnath Singh will today lead a roadshow in Goda and address a public meeting in Dumka in favor of BJP candidate. Apart from these, Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh Vishnu Dev Sai will address election meetings in three Lok Sabha constituencies. On the other hand, Jharkhand Mukti Morcha leader and Chief Minister Champai Soren and party leader Kalpana Soren will address a public meeting in Dumka in support of party candidate. Leaders of Congress and other parties are also scheduled to participate in election campaign. Campaign at various places. With Silpi, this is Jitendra Divedi, Akashwani News, Rachi. In our series covering profiles of key constituencies for Lok Sabha elections, today we bring you a report on Vijayawada Lok Sabha constituency, which is one of the 25 Lok Sabha seats from Andhra Pradesh. More details on this from our correspondent. On the flanks of mighty hill Indra Kiladri resides the historical city Vijayawada. The Lok Sabha constituency of Vijayawada has been a hotbed for Andhra Pradesh politics since its inception. Apart from Congress party winning higher number of times, Telugu Desam party had a stronghold in this Lok Sabha seat. With 16 lakh voters spread over 7 assembly segments, male and female share equal vote bank. In 2019 general elections, even though YSR Congress party won 6 out of 7 assembly seats, Telugu Desam party secured Lok Sabha constituency. Kesanini Nani from Telugu Desam party won 2019 election with a majority of 8,000 votes against Potlur Varaprasad from YSR Congress party. Interestingly, this time Kesanini Nani is contesting from YSR Congress party and his brother Kesanini Sivanath got ticket from Telugu Desam party led NDA coalition. Although there are 17 candidates in fray, the main contest Test is going to be between siblings. The shifting of state capital from Amaravati and pending infrastructure projects in the city are the key electoral issues in the constituency. Sai Sishla for Akashwani News, Vijayawada. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Lok Nirnay 2024, a special program on the general elections every evening at 7 and repeat broadcast at 9.30 p.m. on Akashwani Gold. Updates of election activities, insights from regions and constituencies, expert opinion and analysis in the world's largest festival of democracy. Stay tuned to Lok Prasarak Ke Saath, Lok Niranay 2024. Welcome back to the morning news. The annual India-UK strategic dialogue was held in New Delhi yesterday. National Security Advisor of India, Ajit Dobhal, co-chaired the meeting along with his United Kingdom counterpart, Tim Barrow. During the meeting, they held discussions on deepening the comprehensive strategic partnership and exchanged views on global security challenges. The External Affairs Ministry spokesperson, Randeev Jaiswal, said that as part of this engagement, the two sides had extensive discussions covering all security issues. He said that the meeting focused around technology and security initiative, which will be a major bilateral mechanism to strengthen cooperation in critical and emerging technologies. In a diplomatic breakthrough, five of the Indian sailors on board an Israeli-linked vessel seized by Tehran were released and have departed from Iran. The Indian embassy, while sharing details of their release yesterday, thanked the Iranian authorities for their close coordination with the embassy and Indian consulate in Bandar Abbas. The Israeli-linked cargo ship was seized by Iran on April 13 with 17 Indian nationals on board. The Iranian ambassador to India, Iraj Ilahi, has also said that the Indian nationals, crew members of MSC Ares are not detained and they are free to go. In Uttarakhand, the portals of Kedarnath Dham were ceremoniously opened today on Akshay Tritya, marking the official commencement of the revered Char Dham Yatra in the state. Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami was also present to witness this divine event. A report. Today at 7 a.m. in the morning, the doors of Kedarnath Dham were opened to devotees attracting thousands who gathered to witness this auspicious event. On this occasion, the divine ambience around Kedarnath resonated with the fervent chants of Har Har Mahadev accompanied by the melodious string tunes of the army band. Kedarnath Dham was adorned with approximately 20 quintals of marigold flowers creating a vibrant atmosphere. Today, the doors of Gangotri and Yamnotri Dham will also swing open. A significant gathering of devotees has assembled at both sacred sites 
right to witness this auspicious event. Meanwhile, the state government has implemented extensive measures to ensure the comfort and safety of the pilgrims during the Chardham Yatra. This year has witnessed a remarkable enthusiasm among the people for the pilgrimage with over 22 lakh devotees registering for this sacred journey. Sanjeev Sundriyal, Akashwani News, Dharadun. The Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, has announced that one of its labs has achieved success in developing liquid ramjet fuel for an advanced air-breathing engine. This fuel has been tested successfully at ramjet test bed at Defence Research and Development Laboratory, DRDL, on Wednesday. BPCL and Mineral Oil Corporation are industry partner in this development. The death toll in yesterday's cracker blast factory at Shivakashi has risen to 10. 11 people have been severely injured in the blast and efforts are on to clear the rubble as some are missing. Condoling the death, Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has urged officials to take swift rescue action and ensure proper treatment to those injured. A case has been registered against the owner and the person running the factory on lease. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also expressed anguish at the loss of lives due to a mishap at the factory in Shivakashi. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar will visit Ayodhya this evening and perform Darshan Poojan of Ram Lala. This is his first visit after consecration ceremony of Ram Lala at Sri Ram Janbhumi in Ayodhya. During his one-day visit, the Vice President will visit Sri Ram Lala Temple, Hanuman Gari Temple, Kuber Tila in Ayodhya and participate in the Aarti at Saryu Ghat. Heat wave conditions are likely to prevail in Rajasthan till today. The India Meteorological Department, IMD, has forecast hot and humid weather in Gujarat till Sunday. A report. While the tight grip of heat wave has been unfastened, IMD has indicated towards rainfall along with thunderstorm and lightning over West Bengal, Sikkim, Bihar, Odisha and Jharkhand today. And such conditions are likely to continue till the next two days. Heavy rainfall is also likely over Northeast India today. The weather office said thunderstorm, lightning and gusty winds are likely to prevail over various parts of Northern and Central India for the next few days. Heavy rainfall is very likely in Southern India till the next two to three days. Meanwhile, Delhi is likely to witness partly cloudy sky with the possibility of drizzle towards the night today. The minimum and maximum temperatures are likely to hover around 27 degrees and 40 degrees Celsius respectively. Arpita Chaudhary, Akashwani News, Delhi. Hockey India has announced a 24-member Indian men's hockey team that will take part in the FIH Hockey Pro League 2023-24 to be held in Antwerp, Belgium and London. The Belgium leg will begin on May 22nd and end on May 30th, while the England leg will commence on June 1st and conclude on June 12th. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bengaluru defeated Punjab Kings by 60 runs in Dharamshala last night. Chasing the target of 242 runs, Punjab Kings were bundled out at 181 with Rili Rosso, the highest scorer, with 61 runs. Virat Kohli scored 92 in 47 balls, while Rajat Patidar scored 55. In today's fixture, Gujarat Titans will lock horns with Chennai Super Kings at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. And now for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Sarabjit. The most newspapers today open with the ED opposing the grant of interim bill to Delhi CM Arvind K. Jriwal. The Hindustan Times leads with ED opposes bail again on K. Jriwal verdict eve. The Tribune writes, canvassing no basis for bail to K. Jri ED. Putting an end to the suffering of flyers, deadlock over, Air India Express will take to the skies again, reports a pioneer. With political uncertainty continuing in Haryana, the Asian Age headline reads, Amid Haryana crisis, Congress and JJP urge governor to act. With sales position vacancies on the rise, startups looking to hire freshers with zero to three years of experience, expanding beyond metro cities, writes the statesman. And finally, in an effort towards saving the capital city, SC orders stay on tree felling in Ridge near Delhi University, writes the Delhi Tribune. And with that, it's back to you, Sarabjit. Thank you, Subhadra. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Campaigning intensifies for remaining phases of Lok Sabha elections. National Security Advisor Ajit Dobhal holds annual India-UK strategic dialogue with his UK counterpart Tim Barrow in New Delhi. Iran releases five Indian sailors on board seized Israeli-linked vessel. 
चार धाम यात्रा इन उत्तराखंड बिगिन विद द ओपनिंग ऑफ केदारनाथ पोर्टल्स डीआरडीओ सक्सेसफुली डेवलप्स लिक्विड रैमजेट फ्यूल फॉर एन एडवांस्ड एयर ब्रीदिंग इंजन and hockey india announces 24 member men's team for fih hockey pro league 2023-24 and with that we end the morning news have a nice day